just wanted to go through the principles of making a looping background again with you because I think when we did it together the other day I may have confused you by making it unnecessarily complicated so this is going to be a simple example and hopefully the principle will become clear so I'm going to start by making a <clears throat> with the ellipse tool holding down the shift and the command key so that it grows around its middle I'm going to start out by, main, by just by making a circle um, and I want the circle to have no fill so I turn out the fill a stroke, yep I'm going to have a stroke and the stroke value is going to be let's say 24 <clears throat> and I want it to um, change colour as it grows so if I have at the beginning it can be white so I'll click the stopwatch for the colour and if I come along to about 40 frames I'm going to change that colour to just a red for example so it will go from white to red <clears throat> Um, this this composition, by the way, is just an HD TV composition, 25 frames a second, and it's 100 frames long. Okay, so uh, I've got a circle that changes colour at the moment, and I want it to change size as well. So if I come down to transform ellipse, I want it scale at frame zero to be. Zero. Whoops. Type in zero and hit the stopwatch. <coughs> and at the end of the sequence, I want it to be enormous, something like that. Okay. So we'll go from that to that, <coughs> and then over the last, say, twenty-five frames, I want it to fade out. So opacity at the end is zero, click the stopwatch, come in a bit to about 75, and make that 100 again. So it grows and it fades out, it grows, changes colour and fades out. So I'm going to make a looping background using this animating circle. Okay, so let's start by <coughs> closing down those values there. Let's start by making, let's say, six copies. So Command D to duplicate. One, two, three, four, five, six. And if I just get to a position where I can see the circles, <coughs> I just want to offset them. I want to move them so they start in different positions. So I'm just clicking and dragging <coughs> to get a distribution of circles, something like that, okay? So at the moment they're all starting and finishing at the same time. <coughs> like that. Okay. So I want to make a looping background out of these circles. And I'm going to do that by, if I change the colour of this one, perhaps it will become clearer. This one, I'm going to split the layer, okay? Just choose anywhere <coughs> with that one. It's that one there. I'm going to split the layer. You come to Edit, Split Layer, and it just snips that layer in two, okay? So um, we know that at that point, this frame on this layer is followed by this frame on that layer. So if we shift that frame to there, the beginning of the layer, and this frame to there, the end of the layer, we know that when we loop it, the end of that layer matches the beginning of this layer. The end of this layer matches the beginning of that layer. So when we play it, it will loop. Can you see that? So let's try doing that to another layer. Let's select 
this layer here. This layer change the color of the layer just so you can recognize it. And let's split this one in here for instance. Okay, so edit split layer, drag the end to the beginning and the beginning to the end. Like that. <clears throat> and loop that. So now that will loop. So just gradually we're getting a kind of we're blurring the beginning and the end. So that you begin not to realise where one where the loop begins and ends. Because we're able to disguise it by cutting up these layers. So let's do that again. So let's take this layer this time and change its colour and edit split layer move the end to the beginning and the beginning to the end let's just do these last couple change the colour and split the layer edit split layer beginning to the end no, end to the beginning and beginning to the end. And then finally, let's do one more. This one here. Change the colour. And then edit. Split layer. End to the beginning. Beginning to the end. So now they've all got different start and end times. And they are all offset. So in theory now, when I press play, if you watch the join at the end here, there, you can't see a join in the loop, okay? It's a simple principle, but it will save you a lot of time when you're making looping backgrounds. I hope that's a bit clearer than it was in our session.